Good evening everybody, hope you're doing very very well. This is going to probably be quite a quick video because apparently I'm a moron and I didn't charge any of my cameras. <laughs> I'm on my way to work, it is one o'clock in the afternoon, worked from home this morning. I'm working from the office this afternoon because apparently I've got some super important meetings that can't be done over the phone. But the other week I filmed a January vlog type things like I did before on the monkey where I just sort of chatted about a bit of nonsense I did it at like four o'clock in the evening and by the time I finished the video it was pitch black and you could barely see anything so I thought I'd refilm it today join me if you are interested in a little vloggage style thing I'm not going on the motorway so I might turn the cameras off and then re turn them back on when I get to the other end Ooh, poppity pop 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 actually that's a really good idea I'm gonna do that so I'll catch you guys when I get to the other end of the uh, motorway. Definitely 70. Definitely 70. God, it's miserable. Proper miserable. See you in a minute. You're not undertaking me. Thank you very much. I'm at the end of the motorway now, or basically at the end of the motorway. So we can crack on, can't we? This weather's a abysmal. I thought I'd do a little bit of a life update, a little bit of a channel update and talk a little bit bikey, a little, little bit about bikes as well I guess. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Let's do a channel update shall we? You would have noticed there's a few more bike reviews coming out recently. If I'm completely honest I'm not a massive fan of doing bike reviews. There's just every YouTuber and his dog does bike reviews, don't they? Like every single person does a bike review. I try not to be uh, a stats person. I try not to be someone that just goes through and reads out exactly the same as everyone else. And also I try not to do a review as such. It's always like a first ride. Well, as Teapot says, you can't really give a review on a bike when you haven't even done a tank full of fuel. Most of my reviews or my videos, I tend to take bikes out for like two hours. When I did that 1300 GS, I took it out for about three and a half hours and I did a tank full of fuel on it. So I was sort of in an okay position to go, yeah, I like this, I don't like that. I've ridden the previous model, getting negative straight away, aren't I? One of the big things for me is that you can ride any bike, literally any bike, at 30 mile an hour around a town, and it will pretty much feel the same. You have no way of telling how well the chassis handles, does it get out of shape if you throw it into a corner or anything like that. You can't do that when you're just poodling around a town. So that's why I like to ride it like a bit of a twat. I got a lot of shit, a lot, a lot of shit for that um, GS video. 90% of the comments were very positive and like, oh, it's, it's nice to see someone finally abusing the bike. Even the guys at BMW said to me, ride it as you would ride your own bike. Don't fanny around a car park kind of thing. We want to kind of tell people that this bike is not just for 65 year old blokes kind of thing. Actually right, nice and dry at the moment, mate. <laughs> you might see some dodgy messages coming up on that screen from like Dave Ashpole or Ollie Ray. All the most crude, incriminating messages going. I got quite a lot of Nigels. The Nigel name's a little bit like a bit of a, of a male version of a Karen. Sorry for the Nigels watching that aren't arseholes. But yeah, you get a lot of the, oh, you shouldn't be doing that on the public road. One guy commented and said, you do realize that the GS has six gears. Yeah, but you can't test how well a bike handles when in sixth gear doing 70 mile an hour down the motorway. Of course, I rode the boat bike down the motorway, but no one wants to see that. It's boring. My videos are edited for pleasure and entertainment, not for the Nigels. Going, oh, I don't think you should have taken that corner that fast. You should have done it at 40, not 47. That's what I was saying before, wasn't it? Channel update. The channel has got a few more bike reviews at the moment because we'll get onto this in a minute, but I need to sort of buffer myself. I've sort of got behind on on my videos, so bike reviews are an easy way of getting multiple content. Like I can go and ride three bikes and get three weeks worth of content, if that makes sense. Whereas I can't like doing other stuff like the monkey video and stuff you would have seen. Uh, they're a little bit longer in the production process, I guess. Some of you bright-eyed viewers or people that watch the channel regularly might have noticed that I'm in a different jacket. You won't be able to see my trousers, because if you can see my trousers, that's slightly weird. But, as you guys know probably quite well now, I'm somewhat of a brand ambassador for Halvarsons, the premium Scandinavian sort of uh, gear manufacturer, basically. I have been for a while now. I bought my first ever suit that I bought was a Halvarsson suit. I had it for like two or three years. I went into Bike Stop to essentially buy another suit 
from Halvarsons because I was really happy with it. Very, very waterproof. The warranty process, like, like I split the laminate liner in, in my crutch and they replaced them like without any quibble, even though it was like two years later. And Alex, who's one of the guys that now works at Bulldog Triumph in Reading, he was working there at the time and he went, look, we're looking for Halvarsons brand ambassadors through Bike Stop. And I was like, yeah, okay, I mean, what does that consist of? That whole conversation transpired that I ended up getting the Racken jacket, the, the leather Halvarsen suit, which I got for the Wild Atlantic Way trip two years ago. That suit's lasting me really well. It's still very, very good. I've obviously crashed in it as well and uh, had no issues at all. Me being me, I get bored very quickly of stuff and I like, especially with gear, I like to change up my look on a bike. Sometimes I like to wear like the road skin jeans, the Daytona boots and a nice sort of worn looking leather jacket like the Racken is now. And some days I do days like this where I'm just sitting there going, oh, can I be bothered to put on the road skin over trousers? The Racken suit is completely waterproof, but it's the trousers don't fit me anymore because I started going to the gym again. I keep saying that like I'm massive, but I'm really not. I got the rack and suit based on the size jacket I, and trousers I needed at the time. And that was very much when I was slacking on the gym. And uh, since then my rugby legs have come back and I don't fit into the trousers anymore. I was talking to Martin at Bikestop, the director of Bikestop. Sort of said, what I'd love is another Halvarsen suit, but just a different one. Something to change up the channel a bit, change up my, my look a bit and all that sort of stuff. And he went, how about I put you in touch with Chris, who works at Bikerheads. Now, Bikerheads are essentially the UK importer of Halvarsen's gear. They do Rucker, they do Daytonas and all sorts of stuff. So he said, do you want me to put you in touch and see if we can come up with, with an agreement? Obviously, I said yes. Went down to, to meet Chris. Had a very, very lovely conversation with him. And um, guess what turned up this morning? <laughs> And what turned up this morning was this, which is the laminated Grooven jacket from Halvarsons. It's got the Lagan or Lagan trousers, which are also laminated waterproof trousers from Halvarsons. I got these, which are the Jusdale, I think they're called, uh, gloves from Halvarsons that are waterproof. Although Man Cave Moto said he had a load of, he had his leak. So I don't know, I need to try these out. But my dad's had no problems with his, so hopefully they'll be fine. And also my lovely Daytona boots, my brown Daytona AC Classics. I love those boots. I basically live in the things. They've worn through, because I've done 50,000 miles in them. I've worn through the gear shifter pad. He just said, oh, let me know your size. And then they turned up this morning. I was just like, oh my God, this is absolutely incredible. I felt like a very spoiled child at Christmas this morning. Chris, if you're watching this, thank you very, very much. Martin, if you're watching this, thank you very, very much. Bikeheads aren't, uh, you can't buy anything through Bikeheads, but what they do is they supply companies like Bike Stop with Halvarsen's gear. Meaning, if you want to go and buy this gear, my preference for you and Martin's preference would be that you go to Bike Stop. Say you're not in the country and you're, you want to try it on for example, for obvious reasons. Uh, you can go on Bikehead's website, look up where your nearest Halvarsen's stockist is, and go there. They, they've got loads of different shops. But yeah, obviously, because Bike Stop are the ones that set, set this whole deal up, I would love it if you could buy it from Bike Stop. Also, if you buy any ancillaries that go with those, like boots or anything, you can use my discount at Bike Stop. Popping up on screen now. Wop. Carrying on with the channel update quickly. I'm going to be at work before I get to finish this video. I might have to do another one. Whilst I was at Bikerheads talking to Chris, uh, I also run him by something that I was planning on doing anyway, which is a 10,000 subscriber giveaway on my channel. So once I've hit 10,000 subscribers, I will do some form of draw. Stick your comments below, tag someone, share the video, that kind of thing and I'll have like top three prize giveaways or something like that. Not that I need to do it, but I just kind of want to, if I'm honest. Patrons will have their own giveaway, I think. Uh, but Chris said he would happily support that as well. So I need to work out the foibles of it. That is Halvesons through Bikeheads and Bike Stop. That is Road Skin. That is Mad for Bikes and possibly a few others that I'm trying to do some fettling with. 
So that is a very big giveaway for 10,000 subs. So I'm quite excited myself. So that shouldn't be too far off. I'll do a proper video on it and a, a proper actual a big thing about it when I hit 10,000. So you'll see that video in a few weeks' time, I'd assume, hopefully. Unless it's unless I suddenly lose a couple of thousand. Life update slash bike update for me. I'll do this one quickly because I'm on Regent's Park, so I'm only about five miles from work. As you would have heard if you've been watching the Teapot One uh, Brew Time channel, I am in the process of moving house or buying a house, should I say? Oh, this is also a twenty. I should probably do twenty odd. If you've been watching the channel for a while now, you, you will know that Emma and I have been looking to buy a house somewhere, but not here, because I hate London with a passion. So we've been looking further out, further west. We love the Cotswolds. I love riding my bike in Wales. Same distance to Scotland, closer to my parents down in Cornwall. Various different things. A lot of those things are for me, I'm well aware, but I've convinced Emma, so it's fine. We finally bought ourselves a house. We're still going through the process, so there's somewhat of it that is up in the air still but we've had the surveys done all the draft contracts have been exchanged inquiries are basically back now so it's well well underway absolute legend Dolly Ray is currently doing some plans for the house as well I think it's partially what he does for his work I took a load of measurements for him and he's currently doing a load of plans for upstairs downstairs the new kitchen the everything so you're a absolute hero mate I love you so thank you very much go and follow him uh, there's not a lot I can do apart from just say follow him but you can give him a reach around or something like that if you're near him I know he lives up by Richie Vida so Richie if you're watching go and give him a handy <laughs> as I was saying before about all the bike reviews this is kind of why I'm doing it because I'm trying to get a bit ahead of myself so that if there's a few weeks where I don't have internet I don't have an office set up I don't have a editing station or I'm knee deep in plasterboard and various other things then you guys still get content so I'm hoping it shouldn't be a problem but just getting ahead of myself uh, there may be a few weeks where you go oh why is there no video that's why because I'm knee deep in plasterboard I'm getting to work and I've realised I'm bone dry which is brilliant so that's that stuff bike wise obviously this is my super adventure as you all know very very well I've got the monkey bike as well the monkey bike for me that thing's staying. I love that little thing. It's brilliant. I may engine swap it or big bore it. Not sure which way yet. I think I'm going to go engine swap because CB300 engines apparently drop in quite quickly. Uh, I will be keeping it. It will be getting more ridiculous and I will be doing more content on it because it's brilliant. People have even bought bikes. There's a guy called Mark who's one of the Patreons who bought his wife or his wife bought a monkey bike because of my videos and which is just absolutely hilarious you'll obviously see that Joe's bought a monkey bike as well I'm just starting a little monkey revolution and I love it this bike I put on my Instagram the other day about it actually that I didn't know what to do like commuting because my new house is like it's in Oxfordshire so it's 70 something miles away from work each way so it's going to be a lot of mile munching a lot of sort of long days and stuff in the saddle to get to work only a couple of days a week so it's not the end of the world kind of toying with the idea of getting a new bike or another bike just to be a a, a workhorse thing and I kind of thought actually because this is this is 9,000 mile service intervals it's not awful to service like I mean it's expensive to service yes but I can do 100 miles on this and I'm not bored, which is probably the key thing. I think if you're sat on a boring bike, you'll eventually get really bored. You'll struggle to sort of stay awake and stay alert whilst you're riding those distances. So I don't know, like logically keeping this and just putting the cast wheels back on it, putting some nice sticky actual all like road sixes or something like that tires on it and then just paying for the servicing might go might be cheaper than buying another bike and abusing that so I don't know but then that would also mean that I have space in the garage for another bike would I get the 1390 Super Adventure and just use that for trips would I get a 1390 Super Duke would I get something completely different like an R9T don't know it's interesting isn't it bit of an interesting like well very interesting part of my life I managed to get a promotion at work bought a house got a, a load of new sort of sponsorship deals coming through YouTube YouTube's finally sort of starting to come good not on the money side of things but the gear side of things and all the freebies and whatever so it's definitely getting there so I do feel quite quite happy with myself at the moment I do need to it's one of Emma's anniversaries today so I need to um, 
need to make sure I get some flowers or something on the way home. Anyway, that camera is on red. It looks like it's about to die. I'm pretty sure this one's died. Yeah, this one's already died, I think. So I will love and leave you all. I'm going to go and park my bike, run to work, because I've got a meeting at 2 and it's 20 to 2. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video. If you like these chats, let me know, because I think last time I did one, I got a lot of good feedback, like a lot of good feedback, and it's really nice for me to just be able to chat shit, chat about bikes. I don't get a chance to do this ever, so it's just a really nice thing to do, just to talk to a camera. Oh, bye. <laughs> You've just got to imagine that I'm putting my hand over the camera now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like such a knob. <laughs>